Well, welcome, church family, to another week of our Moments with Pastor David and Marie. It's good to see everybody. And again, I, I say this every every week, we're looking forward to the time that we can get back together with the church family and fellowship and and see one another and be together. So, uh, But welcome, and it's good to see everybody. And as, of course, we have Pastor David and Marie with us this this afternoon. Welcome, and thank you for joining us. Of course. How you, I always ask this question, how are you guys doing? We're getting a divorce. <laughs> We're doing I've great. Had it. I've had it with this woman. <laughs> Anything changed? Uh, I know we, as we were speaking before, you're sharing with us that nothing's really changed at home because you spend spend time with each other anyways. We have a naturally boring life, John. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it doesn't matter where we're at. <laughs> we just kind of sit. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Put me like a cushion. Just put me somewhere and I'll just sit there. It doesn't matter yeah. to me at all. I'll sit there too. So yeah. we're, we're not uh, interesting. <laughs> no, not in the least. One of the things that I'm talking to Marie a lot about lately, though, is... Uh, you know, my hair's growing. I haven't had a haircut in almost two months now, so I might as well just keep letting it grow. I think I'll let it grow for a while. Yeah. I'm you know, it's one of those. Again. Remember they had that, uh, what was it, no grow November or no shave November? Yeah. You could do like a no quarantine haircut until the quarantine's over. I'm going to just let my hair grow. Marie loves it really long. No, I, I don't like it very, <laughs> very long, you know. I mean, I, I think it looks good right now. I tried cutting my. I tried letting mine grow, and it, that doesn't work out well. <laughs> it looked like a patch of a, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, patch. <laughs> you know, pastors, uh, pastor, uh, you know, you're. We, we're just speaking before this started. It seems like your your teachings have been different. I mean, this last teaching in Second Corinthians was just. I posted on Facebook straight heat. I mean, it was. Really good. What's changed for you? Well, you're starting to listen. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, right? Yeah, there you go. It's always been the same. You're just starting to hear it, John. I think that um, part of the dynamic of speaking to a live congregation is the interplay between the communicator and those that are being spoken to. And so we have a tendency, as you know, you teach, have a tendency of responding to the people. They they are actually responding, though they may not be speaking. They are responding through body language very often, through a nod of the head or some kind of visible um, uh, response. And so for me, when I'm speaking to a live group, I incorporate other stories. Sometimes I'll, I'll say a quip maybe to make them laugh or something. But what we're getting right now online, and I actually think it's an improvement, is more straight teaching. Mm. And um, I, I actually am preferring that in, in terms of what I'm giving to the congregation. I prefer that. And uh, I think that that's one of the good things that is taking place through this, um, through this quarantine that we're going through. It's helping to improve um, my communication skills. So... There is a difference, and and as mentioned, you know, I'm giving more definitions for words than uh, than in the past. I'm spending more time developing thoughts, and um, I'm not distracted uh, by those who are in front of me because there's just a few people in mm -hmm. the congregation, staff members, who are there with me. And I think that that's part of what we're seeing take place, John. And I also think it's part of the uh, the moment, the hour that we're living in. There's more of an intensity that I feel in terms of communicating these things to the church. Um, I want my people to be well fed. Mm -hmm. I don't want them to turn on our program and, you know, get anything other than uh, 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 as solid a Bible study as I can give to them. And so that has also been refined. Things like that. Yeah, it's been really, uh, it's noticeable. And just these, even in John, your teachings have been just uh, really on fire. It's been yeah. it's been a good thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, and Marie, you know, you've been doing other, you've been doing more interviews. I see with Karis that you're doing with Karis Ministry. Yes. How's that been for you? Well, it's out of my element, <laughs> 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 but um, it's been good. Yeah, it, it's it's been it's been good. I've enjoy, you know enjoyed doing that. But uh, I'm it, sure the women is... enjoy it. 
Yes, they, <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> you know, what can I say? But uh, um, yeah, it's 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 a matter of just trying to reach out to our, our ladies and and um, and then bring people on to share the things that they're doing and mm-hmm. you know what are they doing to pass the time. You know, it's 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 interesting. You Do know, you find to, that you've do, you're doing more now with the women in terms of the more speaking with them and the more interaction with them than than typically when we weren't on quarantine? Right now, yes, yes, you know, right now, yes. Do you enjoy yes. that? I do, I do, I, I am a people person, so I do enjoy that, yeah. but it's it's different when you're communicating in a different way yes. like we are yes. now. You know, it puts me, I'm not, I'm not at ease. <laughs> 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 you know, but, um, but I'm here, <laughs> you know. And um, so, so it's, it's, you know, we all need to, what's the word, uh, get out of our comfort zones, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. So. It's been, I, even for myself, it's difficult for me to just speak in front of a camera. Mm-hmm. And uh, I get mindful of that. And so it really allows me my flow. And so I was talking to Pastor about that and, and just learning how to be comfortable. So it's a transition. We're all mm-hmm. learning. But, you know, even the, the church is... If we see the people that are watching this interview mm-hmm. and hearing from from you both, it looks like the church is really enjoying it, getting good feedback on that. Well, I do miss being together yes. with our body, you know, and, you know, seeing us face to face. I look forward to, I uh, can't wait uh, till uh, this quarantine's over so we mm-hmm. can get back to just being with our body and, and, and just uh, I want to know how they're doing. Right. Yeah. You know? You know, it's interesting, Marie, you bring that up. And that's kind of where I want to go with our, our, our interview today or moments with you two is, you know, when we, one of the things that, Pastor, you discussed earlier was not getting back to a normal when we get back, not getting back into the routine of things. As we're now spending more time with family members and family and marriages, uh, husbands and wives are spending more time together, children are spending more time together, parents with their children, What's the danger of returning back to the relationship that was that what it was before? You know, we looked at that on a bigger picture with the church, not allowing the church to get back to the place where everything's just normal again, attendance starts to drop. It's just the normal thing, the soccer practices, the football practices. We want to guard against that. How would we now not fall back into the place of just going on with our marriages as nothing happened, because now we're spending time with wives and with mm-hmm. husbands and things are being worked through. How would you both would could answer this safeguard against going back to the normalcy of what marriage can look like? You know, um, sometimes people think things are changing uh, permanently simply because they change temporarily. You know, we have a tendency, I'd say, of um, adjusting ourselves to our environment and so within the environment, there are certain things that are demanded, expected, necessary, we'll say. Um, so we, to survive, will adjust. I mean, we do that in all of life, whether it's when you're first going to school and you have to adjust being in the classroom with the teacher, without your mom, and learn how to be friendly with other children and things. And we start from a very early age adapting to environment. And we do that throughout the rest of our life. And you get married and you have to adapt, you know, if you're going to survive. And so that's just pretty, pretty normal. Uh, in, in events like this, though, in the church where this has really been a critical thing, this is um, so unusual for the church to be mandated to not be able to gather, especially for a church that's trying to be biblical like we are, where we see community, you know, being the heart of the, the Christian church. I mean, Jesus calls us the church. We are the ecclesia. We are the called out ones. We're called out, but we're supposed to be called out together. So there's a community of believers, a community of faith. And when you take those things seriously, when you, when you know that uh, the first thing that God ever declares in his word to be not good is for the man to be alone, mm-hmm. which gives to us an insight into the reality of the the unity within the Godhead, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, there's a community, if you will, using that term in a loose way. But he intended us to have community. And so 
in marriage, the man and the woman become the one flesh, and and that's a that's a uh, it has been called a composite unity, you know the two became the one, and so my wife is to fill up the gaps in my life, and I'm to do the same for her, and so that's in marriage. Well, in church, we have a body, and the body has the hands and the feet, the eyes, the ears. You know, that's what Paul says in First Corinthians twelve. Um, and describes it in such a way. And so because the body is made up of many members, uh, the members need to be together or else the body is not going to function properly. And so we've always, as long as I can remember, at least in this church, emphasized that, um, you know, that, that the, God has given some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers in order to equip the saints for the work of ministry, meaning that the church has to work together to perform the acts God would intend to perform through the church, right? And so we need to get together. So what's the temptation? Well, the temptation, I would say, is for the uh, for us to temporarily adapt. In the home, we'll say we're temporarily adapting. The husband is finally starting to pray with the wife and the children, doing devotions, doing those kinds of things. That becomes a temporary new normal. Because he realizes, you know, and, and, and the wife realizes these things are necessary. And, and he sees it. And, and sometimes we can step in and we can do that. But because our comfort level is challenged, because we're not really feeling we're good at that, or perhaps we really just don't want to do that, whatever. Um, once we have the freedom to no longer do that, well, that gives to us the uh, opportunity to see whether something that occurred was actually a genuine mm. change or whether it was a temporary adaptation. And so I would say what we need to do is be very careful that we don't go back to the normal, but that what we're learning to do right now, all those things just mentioned, that that should be the new normal, that, that the husband should wash the wife with the water of the word, that the wife should learn to reverence, respect her husband, that together they should raise their children in the knowledge and nurturement of the Lord, and that should have been what they were doing all along anyway. Because when they gather here with us in church and I'm teaching, or Marie's women's groups are taking place, or women's functions, those are supplemental. Those are not supposed to be their um, complete diet. That's supposed to supplement mm -hmm. and guide and direct and give insight mm -hmm. and all of those things. That's what we're here for. Mm -hmm. But they should be doing these things on their own. And so it's interesting how Paul speaks to the wives in 1 Corinthians, and he says to them that if a wife has any questions, she should ask her husband at home. That means that the husband is to be equipped to be giving answers for the spiritual questions that the wife has. Mm -hmm. And instead of saying, well, we'll go to church, you can ask the pastor, that should be provoking the husband to get into the word. Or mm -hmm. if, he, if he can't find the answer and he does the best that he can, if he is looking and just doesn't know how, well, that's where we come in, where we can say, oh, this is the answer to that, and this is how you can find it for yourself next time. See, that's what a teaching ministry is intended to do. And so when we get back together again, and it won't be too long, and I pray that it's soon, um, I, I hope that things that, that they began to put into practice become their routine for the future. Yes. Anything you'd like to add to that, Marie? Well, I, and I think, well, the woman should be, as a wife, encouraging their husband. Uh, um, I know it, you know, it could, I, I know that some, in some homes, people, you know, are having difficulty because they haven't spent time together, mm, you know. Right. And, um, you know, um, part of the time is that, you know, we need to spend time with our husbands, just him and I, and, and we do that. Um, you know, of course, our children are gone. You know, we don't have children at a home. But I would caution that, uh, you know, when they can, you know, uh, do things with their wives. You know, uh, that should have been, t been taken care of all along, is, is spending some time with your wife. Um, not only your children, of course, but making that time together. And, um, you know... You know, we had to learn to do that, Marie, and I did. did, because I, I, as a husband, I think wives are better equipped for, and and maybe this is, uh, maybe this is wrong. Maybe it's just my opinion, my experience, but I, I suspect that there may be truth to this, that that wives have uh, have more of a propensity towards uh, nurturing their mm -hmm. children and all, 
I'm, I'm going to assume that to be true because most of the men I know um, feel more comfortable with the wife doing the nurturing and the wife very naturally um, does so. She does, you know. And so because of that, um, sometimes a husband may tell the wife, honey, I need more of you. I need mm -hmm. more time with you. I need to talk to you. Mm -hmm. But because the wife is so busy with the children, we'll say when they're small and so active and she's getting so tired, um, she may not hear what he's saying. And so in, in some ways, uh, Marie and I, as a matter of fact, Marie and I had to mm -hmm. learn to, to take that time together. We had to. Yes. I actually had to learn to, to desire time with children. I had to learn that. It's not that you don't have a natural love for them. There is a natural love. But I had to learn how to sit down with the three-year-old, to, to, to talk to one, to learn how to communicate to, to children, you know, to hear what they're saying. And that's all a learned thing. It isn't something that I was born able to do. I had to realize that, that children go through stages of growth and things that Marie was learning because she was with the kids I was in an office, I was coming home and, and the baby would make some jabbering sound and she'd say, oh, she's hungry or she wants this. It's, mm -hmm. it's because she had learned those sounds and what they meant where I hadn't. And I, I began to learn very early that um, if I'm gonna be successful at raising children and being a father or a good husband, I'm gonna to need to learn their language. I'm gonna to need to learn things like that. And the only way I can do that is by spending time with, with uh, Marie. And so I would say that to Marie in the early days, I'd say, we need to take some time together. Mm -hmm. It isn't that she didn't want to, it's that she only had a certain amount of time and certain amount of energy. And she began to have to make adjustments to the needs that, that her husband had too. Yes. Mm -hmm. And she did. And then over time, you know, I learned to, to, to not expect that much. You know, I was told, and maybe you or any father maybe, maybe would know this, that that you're gonna potentially become jealous mm -hmm. uh, of your wife because your wife is gonna give the attention mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. used to get mm -hmm. to somebody else. Right. And and I originally I thought, oh that's no, you know, my wife loves me. No, no, she never didn't love me, but she loved somebody else. Mm -hmm. And then when I saw that she was quicker to hear their voice or meet their need, I had to grow <laughs> up. You know, I had I had to realize some things. As a matter of fact, your wife called to tell me about you, John. No. <laughs> I was like, and it's, about, she time. Call? it's she about time, call. John. I was like, you're looking right at me. <laughs> I'm and Marie's going, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, but that's what you learn. Yes, you have to yes. learn those things. Right? That's, uh, and on the flip side of that, if you guys can both answer this, if that time isn't taken out to to spend time with one another and to be able to get over that, that initial jealousy or almost like second fiddle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What will happen potentially if that time isn't carved out for one another? Well, a lot of things can happen. I mean, you know, the husband can feel, well, I'm, I'm done. You know, I'm, she, she doesn't love me, you know. Uh, I mean, other, and other women may be giving him attention. Mm -hmm. You know, he goes to the office, somebody gives him attention, and he may be liking that. You know, I think that we have to be careful as wives, you know, to make sure to, that we do give our husband uh, undivided attention, you know, um, when we, you know, together and, and, and to be together. We need to have dates together. Uh, um, granted, I, I don't think you can do it. Well, you could probably walk around the right, 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 now. right now, just walk around the block a couple times. That's together. That's that's good. Yes. You know, we've done that. And um, but I, I you know, you have to nourish your 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 marriage. Both of you, both of us, you know, both of us worked on our marriage. You know, I, I was I was, you know, being I had four children and um, and they were pretty close and you know, close, mm -hmm. like had them pretty close. And, um, you know, I was a very nurturing mama. I was always afraid of, you know, they're going to get hurt or, you know, I, and I had to, you know, sometimes they, you know, they fall, you know, but they get back up, right. you know. And um, so I, I had to, I really had to adjust to that. And, and yeah, Marie did. I remember when the, boy, <laughs> the, when the boys were little, you know, she didn't want them playing in 
yes. dirt or mud. She didn't like them wrestling. <laughs> she was just, you know, she was making them into little girls. And and I can still remember, we learned together mm-hmm. about this. Mm. I can still remember us having those conversations because she is very nurturing because she wants to care for him because that's, that's, that's one of uh, the wonderful qualities that she has. She nurtures, she loves it, she cares for the babies. And um, hmm. for me, I, I had to learn similar things from a male perspective, how, how a, a man uh, invests in the lives of a daughter, how a man invests in the life of a son. You know, what, what does that mean? How does that work? And so again, it takes teamwork. We, we, we have to work together and we need to see that we complement each other. You can either complement by mm-hmm. adding to one another, learning from one another, and then combining and producing, or you can compete. If you compete, then it's going to be a lot of argument. It's going to be a lot of difficulty. It's going to be maybe angry times, you know. Don't do that. Don't say that. Don't be that. And so, again, that's uh, that's part of the iron sharpening mm-hmm. iron that takes place. That's that's part of saying together we want to we want to do something that has value for uh, for others and the others happen to be our children and it all goes back i think to nurturing our own relationship right. you know mm-hmm. if if i know that marie has made time and sacrifices for me her time it makes me appreciate her more and, and if I realize that she's taking care of children and she's so tired right now and why am I demanding attention and and I grow up enough to stop being, you know, her fifth child rather than the fourth that she's already <laughs> raising, then maybe she'll be she'll be more of a, uh, open to, to talk to me and share with me and, and, and be with me. And it just works that way, John. And over over the years, um, that's kind of what it became for us. You know, going on that, uh, just exactly what you're saying, the danger of potentially taking one another for granted can be something that can easily sneak in, especially when there's there can be those feelings of, of wow, she's given all her time to the children, or he's not helping me, you know? And, and uh, it kind of goes into my next question is the importance of love in a marriage. We think of love, of course, there's love in a marriage, but what is that love really connected to? Is it the self-sacrificing love that Christ instructs the husbands to have? Or is it a love that we can have in a marriage that we'll actually use to want to be loved? And uh, Pastor, can you speak, and Marie, can you speak a little bit about how that can be dangerous if you're in a relationship, especially in a marriage, where the only reason why that you're loving is to receive love back? You want to answer first, Anna? You've got much to say because I'm so lovable. <laughs> <laughs> you are. Um, you know what? When I made my vows to my husband, I mean, that was, you know, uh, to, to cherish him, you know, to to be obedient, you know, to obey, you know, to, you know, to love him. Say that again. Say love... that one more time. <laughs> no, I'm Tell not. him more. No, <laughs> Say no. it again. I no, love I will those not. Words. No, but you know, I, I my promise to to love him unconditionally. You know, we've got two sinners sitting here, you know, and we have to learn each other's ways. He, you know, I came from a different family. He came from a different family. You know, I I did things differently than he did. You know, and we had to adjust to those things. You know, we we did. You know, and um, it wasn't it wasn't easy. You know, because I, sometimes I wouldn't understand, you know, um, uh, that my husband needed attention, you know, because I was so busy with the kids. Right. You know, you can get so busy with the kids and um, and and he can he can feel just left completely left out of the relationship. And um, and then you're tired after you put them to bed. And so, you know. You just want to veg out, you know. As a woman, I was tired. I just want to veg out, oh, you know. And I, I think that, no, we need to. You need to spend time with your husband every every daily. You need to have that time where it's just you and him, uh, when the children go to bed, you know. And you can talk. You can ask him how he's 
done. Because, you know, every man who is working, they go to some place, and there's usually women that work there. And like I said, somebody will give you attention, you know, and um, um, and especially even, you know, they, they may see a pastor and they may say, oh, wow, you know, I want to ask him questions. And, and um, <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's true. I mean, and, 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 and I'm and I'm, you know, and and, uh, you know, then looking at looking to him, wanting to look to him and, start, you know, start looking trying to be a depend, almost dependent upon him with their, some of their questions, some of the women can be. And it can be, you know. Um, and um, so we have guarded our marriage. That's, that's something that we have really uh, worked on. You know, we spent a lot of time together. You know, not that we didn't when we were younger. It was, you know, it was harder because of, you know, all the things we did at home and with the children and as they were growing and like I said they were close in age so we were real busy but um, but you know I you know the promise to love and you know love and obey we kept you know um, we love each other you know now, were there times when we disagreed yes you know um, but we worked through those things you know um, you know, and we've had a, we've, I, I think we've had a very good marriage. I do too. <laughs> it's because I'm pinching him. He's saying that. Oh, oh, we've had a great yeah. marriage. You know, uh, and I thank God for it because, you know, you know, the whole thing is, is John, is that as believers, we are to put others first. Mm. You know, my husband has to be put first. You know, my mom, my dad, my, you know, and I saw da David's mom put his, his, her, his dad first. He's, serve him first, you know. Um, and, you know, as believers, you know, the children need to know that he's the head of the house, you know, that they are, are to honor their father. And, and, and that's, a lot of it's my responsibility to the children to, you know, telling the children that your dad is, you know, is coming home and, he, you know, you, you know, you need to honor your father, you know, you don't, you don't mess around with your father, mm -hmm. you know. And, um, and, um, so, you know, I, you know, that was something that I was taught respect. We respect one another. Um, and a lot of households don't mm. respect one another. They speak. Um, they, don't, they don't talk. Uh, you know, I know of, of husbands and wives who speak to either, uh, one another, uh, you know, uh, terribly. Terribly. Um, and, um, you know, they don't have a good relationship. They take each other for granted, and I don't think we can, we shouldn't ever take each other for granted. Yes. You know, cherish the moments that we have um, together, because I'm, I might not be here tomorrow, or he might not be here tomorrow. Is that you a know? hope? No, it's not a hope. <laughs> it's not a hope, but I'm just saying, you know, um, you don't want to regret you don't want to live with regret that, oh, I didn't do this, or, oh, I didn't do that, or I should have done this, you know, I could have been kind, or I could have, you know, done this for my husband, done, done certain things for my husband that he liked, and I didn't, and rather, you know, I, uh, you know, um, I, I, I think you could, you, I don't want to go home, or I don't want him to leave me, and I don't want to regret you know, I want memories that, God, you were, I was blessed. We were blessed. He was blessed. Um, um, he's, the, he's the most important person to me. You know, our children come afterwards, but, you know, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> Depends on how they react. Yeah. No, we love our babies, but, you know, and I love my family, and he loves, you know, his. But... Um, you know, we've always felt comfortable, just David and Marie. You know, when, when I first got saved, John, um, I, I started reading the Bible. And, uh, you know, it spoke concerning how we love him because he first loved us. And it, it's, blessed, it's more blessed to give than to receive. And I, I began to see scriptures about uh, 
greater love has no man than this, than to lay down his life for his friends. So I'm reading the Bible, and I'm starting to see that, that it's not about me, that it's about him. And so that naturally begins to express itself in relationships. Now, it, it wasn't immediate. I wouldn't pretend that it was. I had, it took a long time to learn what I just said uh, in relationships. Because, I mean, most men want to be loved, you know, rather than to love. Because when you love, you sacrifice. When you love, you're yielding. When you love, when you biblically love uh, in the agape form, you are actually uh, yielding of yourself in a sacrificial way. You're dying to yourself. Mm -hmm. And so that isn't the most appealing thing. I, I have been at the, at the bedside of those who were about to depart to go to heaven. And there's not always an anxiousness, you know, oh, I'm going to die. It's more a matter of, oh, my, I'm, I'm going to die. You know, it's that grasping for, for one more day. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's that desire to hold on for one more moment. That's natural for us. Well, that's part of our nature is to, to want to survive and to want to be victorious, right? And so in matters of love and relationship, we can bring those worldly men, that worldly mentality into our relationship. And so you learn at a very early age that the one who loves less has most power. Mm -hmm. You do. You know, you can you can control somebody by their emotions. It's not hard to do. And so as a, a kid going into dating, learning to date, I I didn't have lots of dates. I never really did. I wasn't that guy who had girlfriends lots. I didn't I never did. But the few that I that I began to experiment with to kind of learn to be a man with, you know, how do you treat a woman kind of thing, I discovered that if the girl started saying, I really like you more than, you know, quicker than I ever did. I discovered that I could, I could manipulate her. I discovered that I, I could say, oh, I'll give you a call in a couple hours, you know, when I get home from school and then go hang around with my friends and maybe see her at school the next day. And, oh, I was waiting for you to call me, she could say. And I'd say, hey, yeah, I got busy, you know, because she cared more for me than I cared for her. I was in control. And I started liking that. I think that there is a, um, I think one of the, the primary original aspects of sin is, is power. It's the desire to control others. You know, God speaks to Eve and says, the one who eats of this is going to, well, Satan said it really, uh, is going to have knowledge, good and evil, you know. I'm going to have power. I'm going to have because knowledge is power. I'm going to, I'm going to be able to control. I'm going to be like God. I think that that is probably part of, at least part of, what took place originally in the, in the fall is this desire to be like God. This desire to control others. This desire to be loved by others. I think that that's part of human nature that's mm -hmm. fallen, and so you take that into relationships, and so. You control people by their emotions. That's not love. That's manipulation. And so I, I know that in a practical way. I think that uh, theoretically what I said is probably sustainable in argument. But the fact is, is I had to learn to stop controlling women by their love for me. And I had to learn to simply love them. And so that's something that, that I've been learning for a long time, John, um, is to love people simply because I love them. And in ministry, and using it in a ministry way, um, I love our fellowship, not to be loved by them, but just because I do. You can't imagine over the history of this church, 39 years um, within the next month or two. Um, you can't imagine, John, how many people I've known who, who have left 
sometimes sometimes people that I loved so much it broke my heart when they left many of them never even saying goodbye never even saying goodbye just I can still remember we're sitting in a room with a couple double doors that you enter into the double doors and right to your left there's a right to your left there's an office and I can still remember being in that office when someone knocked on those double doors and the person in the office with me went to the doors to open them up to see who was standing there and then coming back and he has in his hand the key to the church. You don't hand church keys to just anybody. You hand a church key to somebody you trust because they have access to everything. And so you don't just hand a church key to anybody. And he comes walking and he's got the key in his hand and somebody whom we trusted deeply, deeply enough to give that key to, had stood at that door and said, I'm leaving the church, I'm out of here, here, and gave the key. You can't imagine how many times we've had similar instances where we've been someplace where somebody's walked by us at the mall, and they, a woman I'm thinking of, and she drops her hair over her face to try and hide from me as she walks by, you know. Just And I turned to Maria and I said, well, that's so-and-so. <laughs> We're looking right at her. <laughs> and they just do that. John, I, I choose not to remember all the stories I could start telling you. But, you know, we have multiple thousands of people. We've been a mega church since 19, nine, 1989. You know, we've, been, we, we've had over 2,000 members plus for a long time. I cannot tell you how many people over the years have left with just not even a goodbye, not even a we love you, not, not even a, a note. So you can't love people expecting them to love you in return. You just love them, yeah, you know, right. and you don't expect them to call you. You don't expect them to write you. You don't expect them to do anything because Marie and I could say this in our marriage is this way too, but in life in general, I, I love you, John, just because I do. Mm-hmm not because of what you can do for me, but because God put love in my heart for you. It's that way. And if I loved somebody to get something from them, that's not love at all, you know, because the essence of real love is a sacrificial kind of attitude. Well, when you have that in marriage, when, when you grow to that in Christ, when you seek God and say, God, teach me to love the way you love, I, I, that's what happened with me and Marie. Mm-hmm. Took a long time. I'm, yeah. I'm not saying it's. She was much better at it than me, and that's just because I'm much more lovable. Let's face it. <laughs> you know, she, she was, she was much better at it than me. I mean, she really has always had that, 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 that spirit about her that, that she just loved me. It was me. I had to die. I had to, to learn to. To want to love her more than than she could possibly love me, and then what I discovered was the more that I I released of myself, and the more I I cared for her, and the more I tried to tenderly cherish and nourish her, the more she gave back. Mm-hmm. And so, like if you give your wife a hundred percent, and she'll give you a hundred and fifty percent, and that's how it's worked, and it mm-hmm. it, it really has. I mean, she. She's right. I mean, there obviously she would know that there, 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 are, there are women in the church who look to the pastor and look to the wife in a different way. They, they, they want sometimes to be the first, they used to call them the first lady in the church. They, they want to be the pastor's <laughs> wife. And Marie knows that. And, and we've, had, we've had incidents, you know, in the past uh, where, where somebody has set their sights on me. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, and Marie cherishes and guards me. You know, she guards our relationship, and she's aware of those things. And so, you know, my you know my heart safely trusts in her, and her heart safely trusts in me. Mm-hmm. There's there's nobody out there that I would ever want more than my wife, none. But I've never given her reason to think there might be, yes. never have. Because when these guys use jealousy to control and manipulate, and that's just a, that's you're just 
signing the death warrant for your own marriage mm -hmm. because an insecure marriage uh, partner who is insecure doesn't know what you're going to do or whether they can trust you you might as well you might as well just sign that certificate mm -hmm. you've got to have trust and you've got to and how does that work that works by in our case biblically we love because he first loved us mm -hmm. god i want to i want your heart i want to learn to love um, my wife, I, I, I want to learn to put her first. I, I, I used to say this long ago, John, that, um, and Marie knows this, that, you know, one day God may remove me from full-time ministry and I'm going to be in the house rattling around with this woman. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and I want to know her. I, I don't want to be, I don't want her discovering things about me she didn't really, really know. And I don't want to be saying, who is this person I'm with? So we, we made plans long ago to know each other, mm -hmm. to really study and know each other, to hear each other. And we, we've, I think we've succeeded in that. I think so, you know, yes. I do. That's good, good stuff you guys are sharing because that's so important to understand that. And, you know, I meet with couples here at the church quite a bit, and I see that a lot that it's a tick for tack kind of love and it's not, it's unconditional, mm -hmm. you know? And so, well, you know, as we're wrapping up, Pastor and Marie, is there anything you guys like to share with the church to encourage them? Well, another thing, let me just share, you know, like you mentioned with tick for tack, you know, um, I think, you know, as women, sometimes, you know, I mean, not as sometimes, never mind about that, but, um, I think be careful. You guard your you guard your your your, your tongue. I think for uh, to spe speaking to women. I think sometimes women can just rattle their little tongue to a little bit too much, you know, and uh, put on expectations on their husbands. And I, I I would say, you know, get off their backs. Pray for them. Love them. Show them that you care. You know, do the things that women need to do for their husbands. And um, and um, be an encourager to them. Mm -hmm. They don't, so, sometimes I, they don't need to know what they don't do, you know? They need to know, they need to know that you, you love them and you, you're doing something for them and you want, and, and, and through kindness and love and cherishing them and putting them first in your marriage, they, they will respond. Yes. They will respond to that. What man doesn't want to be loved by their wife? Mm -hmm. Unless I appreciate you're crazy. it. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, right. You know. I'm looking at John and saying that. That that must have, <laughs> that must have hurt his feelings. No. Like ouch. No. <laughs> How but, come you, but, you saw that? Yeah. But God, and I have, I have to ask God, give me love. You know, give me love. Give not you know, oh you know, always. I mean, I need to I mean, I love my husband. You know, it's easy, you know. Um Anyway. Oh, that but, hurt. Oh, I love my husband. Give me love for that man. Is that what no, you're saying? No, no, what I'm saying. And then you hit for, me on for, camera? You know, but for people, Lord, even, you know what, even the ones that are unlovely, give me your agape love for those. Because, we're you know, we're all dealing with people that we come in, into contact that are they're, they're, they're difficult to love. And yet, as a believer... I am to love them like a believer, and I'm to I'm to love them like Christ loved the church as well. So, it 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 uh, um, you know it's important. It's well, there must have been something about that guy or that woman when you got married that you felt you loved, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. something changed. Mm -hmm. Now, what would that be? And so many times people say, "Well, it was them." No, it's not always just them. Maybe they're responding to you. Mm -hmm. You know, something changed in a relationship. What was it? And how can we return to the things that we had that made me desire to spend the rest of my life with this person? Because when, when we got married, it was forever. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, you know, I, I knew that. I knew that marriage, because God's word said, you know, whatever God has joined together, let not man put asunder. I don't believe in trial marriages. I don't believe mm -hmm. in... In, in well, well, if it didn't work, we there's always I learn lessons. No, because you'll be a repeat divorce. 
-hmm. you know, because you don't learn your lessons. What you do is you end up you generally marrying a person who's very similar to the one that you just divorced. Mm -hmm. And you haven't changed anything. You, you've stayed the same and you still have unreasonable expectations and demands and things. So you got to die to yourself. And so I knew that. And so when, when Marie and I got married and I was standing there and that pastor was speaking to us and he was saying to me, will you honor and cherish and love her till death do you part? I, I have to tell you, man, I still remember. I was just, God, I don't know if I have it in me to be able to do that. I, I don't know. I, I, I believe I do. And with you, I, 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 I can do whatever I need to do. I know that, but I've, I need help. I need help to be a good man. I need help to be a, a good, a good husband to this woman, a provider for the, all oh, man. I was, I was just sweating bullets up there <laughs> when it wasn't because she wasn't a wonderful girl. I mean, it was because I didn't know if I could do it. And so on our wedding day, I knew that until till she either hands me to Jesus or I hand her to Jesus, it's us. Mm -hmm. It's us. It's us. He brought her into my life and he may take her away. He brought me into her life and he may take me away, not from her in divorce, but one day she's going to place me in his arms and in some church service and she's going to walk up and she's going to say, this is the man that I was married to. Or vice versa. And I want it mm -hmm. to be something that she can say without lying I want her to say this was a good man John that's that's the deepest part of my heart that's a fact mm -hmm. I want her to not regret being with me I don't want that so I have determined to be the best man I could be for her and that's what God created me for Sometimes men don't know their purpose. My purpose is to be a good husband, to teach her the ways of the Lord, to be her protector, her provider, her support, to be the man I was created to be. And in her, I'm made whole. I am a, I'm made whole. And that's just the truth. I mean, that's just my heart to yours. That's just the truth. Marie's the same way. Yes. She's Thank the you. same way. Yes, I will. That's it. That's just, it's us. That's our secret. It's us. We love <laughs> right. one another and we're committed yeah. totally. That was awesome. That was special. Thank you guys for sharing that. And church, isn't this amazing that we're able to spend time with our pastor and Marie to yeah. hear their hearts and to <laughs> hear the, the secrets that aren't really secrets, but uh, <laughs> how they're able to approach marriage and love and, and give us some really practical things that we can learn as men and as women. And so thank you guys so much for joining us again for this week and look forward to next week's interview. And so uh, church family, we look forward to having you. And I know you guys enjoyed this. Please comment below. Uh, there's a, a prayer request you'd like to have uh, Pastor David and Marie or the staff to pray for. Put your comment below. Share this with your friends that uh, you may be able to see, to see that could be helpful for not only our marriages, but for the marriages out there. And one last thing, John, if yes. I may, one last thing. I just want the people to know how much we love them. Yes. And we absolutely. miss them terribly. Yes, we can hardly and wait. we're looking forward to being back with our church. And um, it's going to be a happy day. Yes. But we'll continue doing these kinds of things because I think that um, that people are appreciating it. Yes. And um, we'll, we'll continue doing online ministries and things because we've seen great fruit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And not grape fruit, great fruit. <laughs> and, uh, and so I just want the church, we want the church to know how much mm -hmm. we love you guys. We do. God, God bless you guys. I bless love you. you. Thank you guys.